Hello, and welcome to a probability tutorial. Uh, these first few questions, these first couple of questions, you're going to have a go at yourselves. So I'm going to leave you, leave you with these. You can pause the video and come back to me when you've had a go. Off you go. Okay, so hopefully now you've had a go, you can pause the video and we're going to go through them very quickly, very, very quickly. So let's have a look at the first one. The first one focuses on complementary events. So we've got the probability that you'll be late tomorrow being one tenth. What's the probability that you'll not be late? Okay, so this is relying on you knowing that probability that you're late plus the probability that you're not late. Okay, because there's only two of those possibilities, there's no other possibility available, uh, you're either late or you're not, is equal to one. Okay, so if you're told that the probability you're going to be late is one tenth, what do we have to add on to one tenth to make one? Okay, or could do is say that the probability of not being late is one subtract one subtract the probability of being late or one minus one tenth one is ten tenths minus one tenth which is nine over ten another possible answer you might have given there were ninety percent you could have had or ninety percent or zero point nine Okay, all right, so hopefully that's nice and straightforward. The second one, you throw a fair dice 30 times. Okay, it's your number of trials. How many times would you expect to get a six, to obtain a six? So the probability of getting a six, okay, it's a fair dice, is a six outcome, so it's one in six chance of getting a six. That happens 30 times. So of those 30 times you'd expect to see a six, I hope you realized one six of the time. So if we do one six, I'll find one six of 30. We multiply 30 by one six. Hopefully you got the answer of five times. Okay, excellent. Okay, so there's two answers there. Hopefully they, you were successful on those. Now, this is quite a fancy title, all right, but the actual maths involved, the probability skills are just the same as we've been doing. Um, just a little bit of um, extra level of complexity in that word there or that we'll come to later on. But first of all, let's do A and B. These are really straightforward. So a bag contains six red balls, eight yellow balls and four green balls. One ball is taken at random from the bag. You can see the man here doing so. What's the probability the ball is yellow? OK, let's use the proper notation. Probability of yellow is equal to, well, there's eight yellow balls out of a total of eight plus four is 12 plus six, 18. We can simplify that to four ninths. Excellent. Okay. Next one, probability of green. Okay. Let's do this together. So there's four green balls out of a total of 18 balls. Um, again, we can just half those numbers, can't we? Because they're both even two ninths. Now, here we get to our new type of question today. So What's the probability of yellow or green? Okay, well, yellow or green, how many of those are there? Well, there's eight yellows and four greens. Or, if we just work these things out, actually, it's the probability of a yellow plus the probability of a green. Okay, which in this case, we've just worked them out, is four ninths plus two ninths which is six ninths. And actually we can go one step further there and say they both got the highest common factor being three. So divide by three, two thirds is the answer to that. Now, um, if we didn't have that information in parts A and B, and we were just asked that, okay, we could do it another way as well, which is to think how many of these balls up here are yellow or green out of the 18? Well, eight plus four is 12. So we could have 12 out of the 18. What's the highest common factor? Six. six. Six times table here, isn't it? So how many sixes in 12? That's two. How many sixes in 18? It's three. So we get to the same answer doing it that way as well. Okay. But if you've just already worked those things out, it's really so easy to just, to just add them up. Okay. All right. So that's nice. Final question. Okay. So hopefully this is nice and straightforward ideas. So it's this word or, it basically means that you're taking into account two different categories of things. 
one more then. We've got a set of traffic lights. Um, it's on red a quarter of the time. I'm going to actually annotate this. So this is a quarter. Okay, probability of red is a quarter. Probability of amber is an eighth. Okay, we don't know the probability of green, but we do know that there's only three options there. Okay, so the probability of red plus the probability of amber plus the probability of green must equal one. Okay, because there's only three options. There's no other possible outcomes. So one quarter plus uh, one eighth plus the probability of green is one. Now we know if we're adding up fractions, we have to make the denominators the same. So let's focus on these two. Let's make this number, well, this is eight. Let's make this eights as well. So they match. So it's two eights plus one eighth plus probability of green is one. Two eighths and one eighth is three eighths. So the probability of green is one. Um, three eighths plus the probability of green. Okay, I've been very long winded here. Hopefully, you're following. How many eighths is one? It's eight eighths. So, what's the probability of green got to be? Well, what do you have to add on to three to make eight? Probability of green must be five eighths. Okay, eight eighths. Subtract three eighths if you like. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, a little bit more complex. Um, next one. Now, now I've got all my probabilities. So this is the probability of green is actually 5 over 8. I think I've done my hard work here because now I can just start to add them up. I've got this or in here again. So um, in part B, so that's pi. I did that in a very long-winded way. B, probability of red or amber. So um, this is going to be the probability of red plus the probability of amber, isn't it? which is going to be one quarter plus one eighth. I've talked about making the denominators the same, so that's going to be two eighths plus one eighth. So to collectively, the chance of a red or an amber is three eighths. Okay. And in part C, let's see if we can squeeze this in, um, this is going to be the probability of amber or green. So we're going to add up those two probabilities which is going to be probability of amber, one eighth, which is it's much easier, isn't it? Got the same denominator straight away. And five eighths, which is six eighths. And they're both even. Let's see if we can just half them, see what happens. Three quarters, yeah, can't go any further than that. So the probability of C, amber or green, is three quarters. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick summary of what we've kind of, the maths that's come up here is that the summary is that if you've got events, so let's make that a bit neater. If you've got events A and B, so given events A and B, probability of A or B happening is the probability of A plus the probability of event B. Okay, hopefully that's nice and clear. All right, and it's nice four, four questions to look back on there to help you. Good luck.